Capricorn, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation from Born Without Boundaries. In these weekly videos, I review the major planetary aspects and transits, and then I let you know how they're impacting your natal sun and what that means for your day to day. So you can be well prepped for the week. Uh, this is the week of August 9th to the 15th, 2023. It's in the thumbnail. It's in the uh, title of the video always if you want to know where to look for it. Um, I'm going to start out really broad with the big stuff, the, the global stuff, the what's in the charts right now, the way the, the charts look right now, and how that could impact us. And then I'm going to focus down into Capricorn specific information that all of y'all should be concerned with, or just should know about. And then I'm going to I'm going to break things down into the three decans of Capricorn um, so that I know exactly how all these energies are interacting with your natal sun and then I will let you know what that means for your bottom line. All you need to know to enjoy this video is your birth date. That's it. Everything else I'm going to translate for you. So let's jump in. The big stuff. There are no major transits this week. But we are building up. We're starting to feel that Mercury is slowing down because it is. It normally moves about 10, 10 degrees per week. It's maybe moving about five right now, five or six. It is slow noon. It's because it's going to go retrograde as of August 23rd. And then we'll have Mercury in retrograde, Venus in retrograde, uh, Pluto, uh, Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune are already in retrograde. And by the very beginning of September, we will also have Uranus and Jupiter in retrograde, though I think September 4th is when Venus goes direct again. So September 3rd is a really interesting day because that'll be the day when like how many all major planets except for Mars are in retrograde. <laughs> so we're, listen, you know what that means? There, there's no, oh, because this happens a lot, right? Retrogrades are a natural thing. What it means is that we're slowing down. What it means is that it we're sort of it's an introspective time. It's a time to heal and dig inward and look underneath as opposed to push forward. It's not that we're not making progress, it's that it's quiet progress and that maybe it's not as extroverted, right? It's not as bold or 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 noticeable, but it is developmental. So that's what I want to say. That's a that's a good adjective. Retrogrades are more developmental, whereas when the planets are direct, they're more progressive. So it's never, it's never a bad thing. It's always just these are the energies that are there. Let's slow it down a bit without the high expectations and, and time, it's time to learn, like take time to learn when we're going into the major bulk of retrograde season. It's time to grow through understanding and education. So FYI, <laughs> um, major aspects we have now. So on the 16th, but early morning on the 16th, and by early morning, I do mean around 3 a.m., uh, which is in the U.S., um, we're going to have a new moon in Leo. New moon in Leo is actually quite beautiful because it is conjuncting Venus at that time. It is also uh, trying to Chiron and square to Uranus. So, so this is a fresh start, especially romance, love, and maybe even money and finance. Confidence, how we value things, how we appreciate things, how we allow ourselves to be valued, who we value bringing in those new fresh starts beautiful energy for romance absolutely the fact that it is square to uranus is um probably going to mean it's going to surprise you a little bit what you end up being attracted to or who you end up with this could be just something that you that you wouldn't normally do but it doesn't mean that it's wrong because we do have that trying to chiron which means we've learned from the hard way um how to improve our choices, right? So these changes that we're making could very well be informed by a lot of experience that we've had with doing it wrong and causing ourselves pain. So I like this energy a lot with welcoming in the new and a lot of fresh starts. Um, that's on the 16th. This video goes up through the 15th, but since the, the moon happens early, early wee hours of the morning on the 16th, um, 
you're going to start to feel this energy on the 15th. In fact, on the 15th, there is a lovely moment when the moon, before it is in perfect conjunction with the sun at 23 degrees Leo, at 18 degrees Leo, it's going to be in perfect conjunction with Venus. So we already have the romance starting to brew. The romance, it's almost like the seed before the bloom is the way that I would describe it. Um, all throughout this week, we have the sun conjunct Venus in Leo. They're within four or five degrees of each other all week. I think at the time of the new moon, they're within five degrees of each other. So they're in a pretty tight conjunction and they're both trying to Chiron, which means healing our sense of self-worth, our sense of beauty, our sense of who we are and how we feel about ourselves, maybe even how we feel in general, our sense of confidence and self-esteem and optimism because Sun conjunct Venus is a very optimistic, romantic and Oh, I, I'm calling it flamboyant. It's a flamboyant energy. It likes itself. It wants to be itself out loud. It appreciates being seen because it's in Leo for Christ's sake, of course. Um, we also have a powerful uh, conjunction between Mercury and Mars happening in Virgo. And that comes down to putting things into order, taking action on understanding them completely, all the details uh, and taking action through intellect, through intellect, understanding, and learning. My concern with this conjunction is that by the 10th of August, it's going to be in opposition to Neptune. Why am I concerned? Because it's also trying to Jupiter. Now, Jupiter just makes everything bigger. It makes everything more exaggerated. It kind of blows things up a bit. Um, it makes everything more excessive. So why does that concern me? Because of that opposition to Neptune. Neptune can be very deceptive and very delusional when in a difficult aspect to something. So if this was a trine or a sextile to Neptune, I would not be worried. But this is an opposition to Neptune and that's concerning because that can really, that can really play on insecurities, feelings of not being adequate enough, not being good enough, and then pushing yourself to take actions to try to overcompensate for that. In, or, in other words, making decisions based on delusions or illusions instead of facts and reality. But you're making decisions and you think you're smart because you're Mercury, you're Mercury conjunct. There's that Mercury conjunct Mars energy there. So that, that could cause a lot of problems and taking things to the extreme. So it's something to watch for this week, especially with the very rebellious energy all week long, Sun conjunct Venus square Uranus. That is rebellion. That is, I want something different. I want something new. I want to stake my claim to my uniqueness and my individuality. Meanwhile, what is it based on? Is it based on reality or is it based on delusion and fantasy? Let me explain it to you. So Neptune opposite Mars and Mars conjunct Mercury is almost like attacking the shadow puppet, right? It's like seeing this shadow behind me, right? I mean, like, oh my God, what is that? Uh, it's a monster. It's a shadow monster. No, it's just my hand playing tricks, right? But you're not attacking the hand, you're attacking the shadow because you believe the shadow. You believe the, you believe the hype, you believe the spin, you believe the scary monster that's been invented to distract you and grab your attention and you're attacking that and you're wasting your energy on that instead of realizing this ain't shit. <laughs> what am I wasting my energy for? Like it's, it's some doofus with their hand, you know? That's the thing. That's that's what might hopefully be exposed at this time, but we could also be rebelling based on half facts, delusions, disorientation, and intentional attempts to distract us. That's an FYI uh, in terms of global that I wanted to bring your attention to. Let's go into the Capricorn specific information. In order to do that, I just look at what's going on in Capricorn, the zodiac sign, like that 30 degrees of the wheel in the sky, what's going on there? And then what's going on with your ruling dignitary, which is Saturn. So not much is going on in Capricorn except Pluto at 28 degrees Capricorn that is still very powerfully interacting with its sextile to Neptune, its trine to Uranus, and its square to the nodes, which means we are going through a major consciousness shift. That is not going to tidy up itself or end by the end of this week. All of those things are going to be, um, 
all of those things are going to be happening for well with the nodes at least the next couple of months with uranus and neptune years like that sex how the neptune is going to last for the next 13 years this is a generational marker of usually huge technological discoveries that are breaking through and kind of change society at its core level because of how we can function so would be real interesting to see what's gonna pop up um let's get into saturn what is saturn doing saturn is your ruling dignitary guys and it doesn't move fast it moves about um one zodiac sign every every 2.8 years almost three years so um it doesn't move quickly but it does constantly interact with other planets that are moving quickly around it so it's important for you to know how they're going to be impacting you because it will kind of salt or season your entire life about how other planets are interacting with your ruling dignitary and where your ruling dignitary is right now saturn is in pisces it is in retrograde it's going to retrograde from five degrees pisces to four degrees pisces and it is in a long-term aspect to Chiron, which is a semi-square, which can impact your sense of optimism or your ability to feel like you can do things correctly. But ultimately, any kind of square, semi-square, square, says it could quite, I call it a says it square because I can never say that word right. Um, all of these are created to challenge you so that you learn your strength and you can show yourself that you are better than. So this is really just saying, even when you're in self-doubt, there, there is a way to step forward. And that could just mean that the feeling of being in self-doubt could just mean that you're vulnerable. And sometimes we have to be vulnerable in order to grow. Just an FYI, think about our growth stage as a human being. We're all babies. You're extremely vulnerable as a baby, but every soul has to be daring enough to be that vulnerable at one point during their growth time here on earth. And growth happens like that all the time. That's how growth continues to happen. You gotta let yourself be vulnerable. Let yourself feel not so good at this stuff. You gotta walk on shaky legs so that you can walk on strong legs. It's kind of how it works. And so that's really what's happening there. Um, and Saturn really isn't heavily interacting with anything else right now. It's just all the craziness going on around you. So let's break things down into the decans. Now a decan is uh, 10 degrees. Um, it's, a, it's a group of 10 degrees, like a 10 degree span, right? And there are three of them in each zodiac sign because each zodiac sign covers 30 degrees on the zodiac wheel. So we break things down as astrologers into the decans to see what aspects are forming to your natal sun. Um, why? Because 10 degrees is basically what makes or breaks an aspect. You know, if it's over 10 degrees or ridiculously under 10 degrees, there could be forming a different aspect or the aspect could not be happening at all. So it's really important for us to see what's coming in that 10 degree range to see what is and how your natal sun is being impacted. So let's get into it because not all, you're gonna see it really right away when you listen to all three of these. It's definitely not all, it, the energies here right now are not impacting Capricorns all the same way. There are radical differences between what's going on with you guys. So let's take a listen. If you know your natal sun is between zero and nine degrees Capricorn, it is in the first decan of Capricorn and you are Capricorn once. This correlates to basically December Capricorns, December 22nd through the 31st Capricorn ones. Your natal suns are in a long-term sextile with Saturn. That's basically this whole year, right up through February when it moves into the second decan of Pisces. So this is a great year for you to be productive right and we've talked about that before productive excuse me especially in your maturity staking your claim to your own personality developing yourself and developing your career all of these things are going to pose great opportunities this year and you'll be able to focus on them very easily you are also square to neptune but only if you're at the cusp so that would be the Sagittarius cusp. So 22nd, 23rd would be your birthday, December 20, yeah, December 22nd, 23rd. Um, and then check this out. 
on the 12th, so that's before the new moon, <clears throat> but on the 12th, <clears throat> your natal suns are going to be in opposition to the current moon. What does that mean? It means that the 12th for you guys could be a particularly emotional day. But if you think about it, when the moon is up in opposition to a sun, it is a full moon. So it's not like the moon is actually full, but it's like the, the you will be experiencing your very own full moon. Why am I telling you this? Because it's very much a powerful time for you where the emotions that rise up can push out and be manifested more easily. So if you are into manifestations, prayers, or especially if you're into spell casting, for Capricorn ones, this will be a particularly powerful day for you to do that. It could be more emotional, but the emotions are all about release and pushing forward and creating. And it's very creative energy. Think of like the full moon being pregnant. This is when it's giving birth to uh, a mentality, a vibration. So this is really, really a powerful day for you. And I would highly recommend it for manifestations and such. Um, let's move on to Capricorn 2s. So Capricorn 2s. If you know your natal sun is between 10 and 19 degrees Capricorn, you are Capricorn 2s. Um, the birthdays are usually birthdays that correlate to January 1st through 10th, maybe 11th. It's, it's that time span. Um, you're in a long-term square to Chiron. Um, this is especially true and especially intense for those of you born around the 9th or 10th. And yes, absolutely the 11th, really the 9th through the 12th. That, that would be the tightest square right there. You'd be in a tight square to Chiron. For those of you born earlier, more toward the first or second, especially not such a strong, not such a strong square anymore. You've been through it. You've been through it already for the past couple of years. It's starting to ease up a bit, thank God. Um, but the square to Chiron simply means that you feel you feel like everything is challenging. You feel like everything is super difficult. In fact, more difficult than you feel like it has to be. It's like, why is everything constantly, you know, it's like I, I just climb a mountain and a tree falls in front of me. You know, and it's like, it's, it's that kind of energy. And yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna test your fortitude. It's gonna test your confidence. It's gonna test your competence. It's going to help generate more competence and help you understand that you are a lot more capable than you think you are. The pain in the ass about it is, yes, it, abs it absolutely does last for a couple of years. In fact, this aspect to Chiron, for those of you born around the 9th, 10th especially, are going to be, it's going to affect you at least for another year really intensely. So just an FYI. We also have a trine to Jupiter, which is actually really lovely and harmonious energy. It's a trine to Mercury and a trine to Mars as well. This is very productive energy. This is intensely, I can do it, I can figure it out. This is a blessing kind of energy to really feel this, um, um, I, like I understand it. Uh, I know what this is now. I can make peace with all these facts and information. I can like harmonize my vibrations when it comes to taking action. Now this trine with Mars is really strong up through the 12th. Of this of this of this week so basically toward the beginning of this week is a beautiful time for you to talk take action on understanding learn a new language for Christ's sake like like learn a new culture expand and broaden your horizons and a lot of fortune and luck will come from those kind of interactions um, through the 12th, your natal suns are going to be quincunx the sun. That could be very frustrated. That could be a lot of frustration with how you're being seen or that you're being seen, that you have to be seen. Um, or you could be butting heads with a lot of other egos, but you've got a lot of positive energy working for you. So I think that could just actually entice you or spur you on to grow and expand further. Um, we have also on the 13th, all of you are going to experience that opposition to the moon and that's really beautiful energy because like i said um to the to capricorn ones on the 12th this is going to be a very powerful day for you and yes you can be expecting that um definitely between the 13th and 14th um 
Capricorn 3s, you're going to be experiencing the same thing. A very powerful moon period where I would highly recommend you manifesting or if you do spell work, this is a powerful time for you, casting out those energies. And if you're not aware of it, you could be expelling and casting out emotions that are energy and not even realize it, but you really want to direct this stuff because what you cast out now will be especially powerful. Um, we also have a quincunx to Venus from the 14th. So at, by the end of the week, there'll be a quincunx to Venus which could mean that you're getting your frustration and your inspiration to change and, and um, move things forward from your romance or from your finances, just an FYI. So it almost goes from like the sun spurring you on, egos, egotism, or other pe clashing with other people's egos, being that spur in your side to, to make you wanna change. But by the end of the week, it'll start coming from the Venus energy. So value, things you value, things you love, things that you desire or money itself, FYI. Um, and then we have Capricorn 3s. So if you know your natal sun is between 20 and 29 degrees Capricorn, you are Capricorn 3s. Capricorn 3s. Um, your birthdays are between the 11th or say the 12th and the 22nd of... January, generally speaking. Um, those of you who are born around the 11th or 12th will be experiencing that square to Chiron too, because Chiron is at 19 degrees Aries. It's right there on the cusp between the second decan and the third decan. So you guys are already experiencing that energy, which is just trial after trial after trial for the next couple of years. It's your training ground. That's what it is, y'all. It's your training ground to make you stronger. It doesn't last forever, but it is a son of a bitch while it's there. Just an FYI. Um, we also have Pluto. But you know what? Let me say this. If you get on your sneaks and you get on your sweatpants and you just say, okay, every morning when I wake up, I'm, go I'm going to the gym. And that kind of energy is going to be really helpful, especially since Chiron is in Aries. So it could be about healing your body. You know, and it, it could be about changes that you're going through and have to incorporate inside of your actual physical self. So being healthier and supporting a healthy diet or a healthy lifestyle could really be helpful for you during this very challenging period. Um, your natal suns are conjunct to Pluto, which means there's a lot of change going on in your life anyway. You're quite formidable. This is gonna help people almost gravitate to you darker things seem less intimidating to you. You're gonna have a, a, a bigger personality than you normally do, and that's gonna impact you whether you know it or not, for better or worse. That's long-term. You also have a long-term trine to Uranus, which is peculiarities, peculiarities, and, and harmonizing with your own uniqueness and your own individuality for the next couple of years, understanding your own power and be inter being interested in things, not having to be tied to things that are conventional, being quite comfortable with the unconventional. Um, and then we have the sextile to Neptune. You guys are basically ground zero for a lot of these huge developments and changes that are happening on the globe. Wonder if you are personally involved or simply expect a lot of dynamic and creative and unexpected changes to be happening in your life for the next couple of years. Um, you are also square to the nodes, which represents getting uh, used to or starting to relate to things quite opposite from what used to make you comfortable. So there is a dynamic, there is a dynamic change in your personality as well. This week, by the 12th, your natal suns are going to be trying to Mars. And your natal suns are quincunx to the new moon. So there's going to be something happening on the new moon between August 15th and 16th that is going to put that spur in your side and make you want to change something or get something done because it will be quite emotional for you. Since this full moon is happening in Leo, it is could be an opportunity for a new romantic encounter or refreshing or renewing your current romantic situation or it could be about also cleaning up those finances. Those could be what puts that that inspiration into you, but it's an uncomfortable inspiration. Could be a little painful. It won't be horrible, but it 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 will be a little bit painful in order for you to realize 
these are the changes that I have to make and this is where I have to put my energy from this point on. Just an FYI, it's a very revealing time for you guys. So you let me know in the comments below how all this energy is impacting you. I love to know. And definitely come on over to Born Without Boundaries for your week ahead tarot card message. Subscribe to this channel before you click off. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the videos. Bye.